In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to mix an acoustic guitar recording in GarageBand on your iPhone or iPad. So let's go. Hey, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, consider subscribing and sticking around. Today, we've got something pretty cool. I have recently imported some tracks from Mr. Joe Gilder. If you missed the video where I did this, check that out up the top or in the description. And what I did is I downloaded from Dropbox a zip file of some WAV files of his song and a couple of acoustic guitar recordings. I've brought those into GarageBand and now I'm actually going to show you some of the things that I use to actually mix. So we're talking compression, EQ, maybe some reverb, a little delay perhaps, maybe even some volume automation. We might get that intense here. We don't know. So let's jump in now to the iPad, take a look in GarageBand and see what we're doing. Radio Basil's excited back there. I'm sure you're excited too. Let's jump in and take a look at some of these tracks. So we've got here in GarageBand, we've got one, two, three tracks. I don't know why I have an empty track there. Let's delete that. It looks messy. So the first track here is the backing track or the, the entire track except the acoustic guitar, which is like the main instrument of this song. So if we play that, it sounds like this. Don't you know? Very cool. But what we can do now is we've got the raw acoustic guitar, which is the unprocessed, unmixed acoustic guitar. If we bring that into the mix, it sounds like this. Just solo that one. So that's the unmixed guitar. If we swap it up, let's take a listen to the mixed guitar. And back to our unmixed guitar. Now, when I first listened to this, I thought to myself, I actually think that the unmixed guitar sounds really good. Obviously, what Joe's done here is uh, a few EQ moves, maybe some compression and maybe some uh, maybe some reverb. We'll take a bit of a play and we'll see what we can do. So part of the challenge was actually not to play that mixed one before we actually mix the raw. So sorry, if you're playing along at home, I've kind of jumped the gun there and I've showed you that. But let's just solo these two now because what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some of the common things I do and some of the things you may want to consider doing when mixing here in GarageBand. So let's just have a quick listen to this track again. And back in the mix. You're running out of time. And again, it's such good source material when you start with a track like this. So what we can do though, let's go into our plugins and EQ and I'm going to use all the stock plugins here in GarageBand just because why not? We can, it's a bit of fun. So what we can do here, let's firstly go into plugins and EQ and let's look at a compressor. So what sort of compression settings will we have on this guitar? We'll show you what a compressor will do to a guitar. So we'll turn it on here. Let's come to a section where we've got some guitar playing here and hit play. We turn the compressor off back on. So at the stock settings here at, you know, minus 11.5 threshold, the ratio 2.5 to 1, attack of 10 milliseconds, all we've really done is boosted up the gain here. So I'm actually going to level that gain back out to zero. And if we play and turn off, here it's not really doing anything. So all we were really doing before was actually a gain adjustment. And that's the first tip I want to show you here for mixing anything in GarageBand. Don't just hit the button and think that it's doing a thing because all this compressor is doing is turning up the volume because all we've got is that makeup gain. What we actually want to do is dial down the threshold and then maybe increase the ratio here to just get a more consistent and, and uh, even volume performance. So we'll do that now. We'll turn it off and we'll turn it back on with some sort of more aggressive settings here on the threshold. And there it is with it off. And there's with it on. So even that, we probably don't need the, the threshold up that much. And we can probably drop the attack down a little bit. Now, because we're using GarageBand, we don't have all of the great control that you would have. So when you watch Joe's video where he mixes this, he'll show you a bunch more settings on your compressor. But don't, don't be daunted by that. Use what you have and learn how to use the settings that you have. So make it sound good using what you've got here. So we're going to do that now. Hit play again. Turn it off. So 
there you go. I've got some very light compression on there now. Let's bring it back into the mix because you want to make sure that you're always bringing back into the mix. Even if you're doing a few things just to hear the difference soloed, don't make your final decision soloed because it won't be the right one. You won't know how it sounds in the mix. So we'll bring it back in. If all that fear is a compass meant to steer you to something So yeah, there's not a whole lot of difference there. I'm probably just bringing the little, just the tops off of that and just making sure that that volume is leveled out there. We can change the mix here. We can increase the gain if we need to when we get to that stage. What are some other things we can do? Well, EQ is something that uh, I'm pretty sure Joe has done on his guitar. So we'll tap on our visual EQ. Now, the limitation we have here in GarageBand is we've got three bands and they're only really peak limiters. So we don't really have high pass and high shelf and low pass, low shelf, all these sorts of things. We've really only got three. But what we can still do is we can do some sweeping around here and we can work out what sort of frequencies we may want to adjust here. So let's uh, solo this track now. We'll come in here if we hit play. Just double tap to bring these back to gain. And what you would normally do, we'll just pause for a minute, what you would normally do on something like this is probably do some sort of low-pass filter because you don't want a lot of that low-end sound coming in there uh, in an in a acoustic guitar track. So we'll, we'll, we'll play around with that. Let's just see what that does if we do put that uh, low, low-cut, high-pass filter on there. So what you're probably hearing there is it's just, it's cleaned it up a little bit. And because we've cheated and we checked out Joe's original video, then we we know that that's similar to what he did. So we can just put that there, that high pass filter, um, and make sure that we've removed that. We'll just play it again and I'll just show you again. So if we boost it, you can hear what we're actually cutting out. And it's probably just added a little bit of clarity to that sound. So it's just going to help us out there. The other moves that we can make, well, we can play around with the mid-range here. So anything sort of between, you know, 500, uh, 1,000 hertz here. So let's just play and we'll we'll do some sweeping. We'll increase here. And this is, a, again, a good way, especially when you're starting out, to learn how to EQ. We'll hit play. So around about there, maybe we want to actually make a cut again. Uh, you, you watch you watch Joe's final video and he'll do completely the opposite of this and you'll all laugh at me, but that's okay because experimentation is key here, just trying different things. And because we're a little bit limited here in GarageBand, we're just going to play around and see what we get. So let's just play it again here. There we go. And we may then want to just sort of put a little bit, we don't really have a shelf. So ideally you'd want something like a high shelf. And there is another EQ. If you want to, if you want more control, LRC5 is a five band EQ that does have better control. You can check out a video about that up there and in the description, but we're just going to use this for now. So we'll play here. So going right up like that, it's going to sound way too tinny as you can hear. But just a little bit of air there might actually add to the sound. We'll give that a go, shall we? Why not? So we've got a little bit of compression dialed in there. We've got a little bit of the EQ dialed in there. What else can we actually add to this? Well, we could add things like delay and reverb. So will a little bit of reverb actually help here? Let's find out. We're going to hit edit and we're going to go uh, plus here. We'll go to reverb, track reverb down here. And what sort of reverb do we think we want to put on here? Uh, so we will dial the wet down to start with because that's always way too intense. And we'll put that about 80-20. Um, make sure that the high cut, yeah, is... is uh, how much of that do we actually want there? We'll leave that around about 5, five kilohertz there. Um, we probably want a little bit of a longer delay on here. And we probably don't want to spread it too much in the stereo spectrum. And we'll play with the pre-delay as we go. So let's just hit play here and see if reverb might be the answer. So there's the reverb dialed right up. There it is just sort of sitting in the mix. If we remove it, add it back in. 
maybe that's doing something. Uh, let's bring it back in with our original track and we'll just play it from one of these sections and see what our newly mixed track is sounding like. <laughs> That's not bad. Now let's just have some fun here. So what if we wanted to add something like some delay? So just because delay is kind of the other effect that you, you might use in this scenario, we'll come into plugins and EQ, we'll go to edit, and then we'll add a delay, a track echo, we call it here in GarageBand. So here's the track echo. Now this sort of song, we might even go with something like a like an eighth note delay, maybe. Let's just see what this will sound like. We'll just really crank it up and just see what this does to start with. Okay, you know what I've realized? <laughs> the problem with using track delay is that we don't have the BPM set for this track. We're just mixing it as a song and GarageBand's delays all actually have a, a timing like that. So track echo is not really going to work on this one because it's going to not actually sync up with the song, which is probably what we would have wanted it to do. So it's another good reason why if you're recording your own GarageBand tracks, you should probably record them on the grid uh, to a metronome. So perhaps we'll go without track echo as such, but what we can do is come to our master effects and actually add some echo here. So we can just add, um, so we don't actually have to, we can use like one of the ambient delays or something here as the echo, if we dial this up like so, let's play it back. So obviously we wouldn't want it like that, but if we dial that down a little bit like this and bring it back in. Maybe a little bit less. Yeah, I think that sounded kind of cool. So we'll bring it back into the mix here. Something great. And you never know if you never go for yourself. So there you go. It's it's kind of it's it's helping it punch through the mix a little bit. It's giving a little bit of flavor, and that's really what your mixing's all about. It's not about doing a bunch of big moves, especially if you get it right at the source. Yes, it's a Joe Gilder phrase that he likes to use a lot. So that is, I think, sounding pretty good. Now, the, the real thing will be here is how does our sound compared to what Joe actually recorded originally? So what I'm going to do is we'll come here and we will play a little section. So here is my newly mixed version here. Let's play that. And here is Joe's version. Back to my version. Back to Joe's version. So what I'm hearing there from Joe's is perhaps the compression, I just need to add a little bit more on mine. So we'll come in here, we'll go to our compressor and we'll maybe just increase the ratio up to maybe three to one and maybe drop the threshold a little bit. How about we play it back now? So there's mine. Pause it, Joe's. So yeah, there you go. Now it's going to be super interesting to find out what Joe actually did do in his mix. And we'll be able to find that out because Joe's doing a follow-up video where he shows us exactly the moves that he made, which I think is going to be super fascinating to see what he used and didn't use. And are we way off the mark here or are we somewhere in the ballpark? And using just GarageBand here with our stock plugins, just, you can use this. That's what I'm saying. We don't need hundreds of dollars worth of AUV3 plugins to do this sort of mixing. Most of your mixing you're going to find is your EQ, your compressor, some reverb and some delay, and you're pretty much home and hose. That's probably 90% of most of your mixing. And of course, volume. So I haven't used volume automation in this one because Joe did a pretty good job recording at the right levels. Again, if you record well, microphone placement, technique, all of that stuff, you're going to be good. But let's have a little bit of a listen here to... We'll come down here to a section. We'll just go out by listening to a little bit of It's OK by Joe Gilder. It's okay. 
And there you go, just a few little tips and tricks that I use to mix here in GarageBand. And we'll see what Joe does with this mix. So make sure that you check out Joe's channel. I'll link the video down there if it's in the future and it's already there, or you can check the description later and make sure that you check that out. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.